Look for her boyfriend in the movies, Travis Kelsey. Close to locking down his first film production credit, the Kansas City Chiefs tight end is the executive producer for the, for the dark comedy, My Dead Friend Zoe. It stars Morgan Freeman, Sonequa Martin-Green, Ed Harris, and Natalie Morales. It will premiere at the South by Southwest Film Festival next month. It is also the first film to be indirectly financed to buy President Biden's Inflation Reduction Act. The investors taking advantage of renewable energy tax credits to fund the project. Stefano Defray is an actor. He is also the director and screenwriter of the film Stolen Doe. Okay, Stefano. I did not have Travis Kelsey, Stolen Doe, and the Inflation Reduction Act on my bingo card. Explain how all of this comes about. Well, first of all, you need financing for films. Uh, Dell, you know that. They're risky, risky investments. Our film, Stolen Doe, was, uh, got a grant and got an investment from the Russo brothers that were famous in the Marvel Studio Universe. Travis Kelsey is winning all the time. Super Bowls, one of the greatest girlfriends of all time, and I think uh, a legend in now film producing. Um, Look, the federal program of the Inflation, uh, the Inflation Reduction Act provides tax incentives. So you would have to partner with a company as a producer to sell tax credits that you would otherwise have to pay on the LLC or your personal income taxes. And so the incentive is essentially to have these companies do a more green job of making these films so that they are... Um, you're reducing the risk of the investment, the initial investment of the film. Stefano, um, you and I have something in common, which is that we have both worked the, the crowds of can. And people don't understand what it is like to be a director or a producer at can. They think you simply walk into a tent, someone shakes a hand and says, you know, I really like your movie, so let me write a check for you. It is block upon block, hotel room upon hotel room of people that are saying, who's in it? How much money can I make? And is this a big star today? Not a big star yesterday. I was sitting on the curb with Roddy McDowell and people were basically kicking dirt in both of our faces and then he became famous after that. Explain to me what a director goes through just to get financing. So look, I mean, you're bringing up a lot of great points. The fact is that um, there's a risk. We, you know, It's not just all the tents and going to the different tents at the Cannes Film Festival that I attend every year you know that there's a certain amount of money, uh, whether it's $10 million, $15 million, or even $1 million, and the investors expect their money to be recouped. The magic of filmmaking can sometimes go away after the initial month or two months. Once you start getting in production, your investors want to make that money back. If you can find ways, if producers can find ways to incentivize um, individuals to get back that money, whether it be on their taxes, their tax returns, LLCs, or fiscal sponsors, that's uh, ideal for you as a director. I spend a lot of time, probably half my time, instead of doing shot lists or shooting, is raising money, raising capital. Um, and it's a lifelong project because you really have every investor is very different of what they're looking for and they want to make sure that they can get that money back and they also want to make sure that the money is in responsible hands of those producers. So Stefano, you know people are going to be wondering, we are $34 trillion in debt as a country. So why should my government money go towards funding your film? You know, I, I think films are going to get made either way. I mean, that's a very good point. Our fiscal imbalance, let's say, is going to be a big topic of debate in the 2024 election. Uh, certainly something that the Republicans will definitely harp on and are, have already talked about in the House of Representatives. But I think that um, films are going to get made irrespective. The, the Democrats passed this uh, federal uh, law, put it into practice by President Biden uh, about a year and a half ago. And so we should use it. And if it means that we use less waste and we are more efficient with how we make films, and if we do them in a way that can use renewable energies, 
that's a good thing. Ultimately, it's a good thing. We're going to end up making mo movies whether there is federal plans for it or not. Um, I just want to say one quick example. In Europe, there's a lot of federal funding for films that uh, European directors can take advantage of. You and I both know that we don't have that because we raise most of our money through private equity and a little bit through the National Endowment of the Arts and federal funds. So it's important for people to put into context that art artists and filmmakers like us, we're still relying a lot on private money. And so we're going to make movies, whether there's tax credits or not, let's do it in a renewable way. That's Stefano, way. 30 seconds left. on. I only have 30 seconds. They're already yelling at me. But Stolen Dough, what's your elevator pitch? Greatest lawsuit in food history. Uh, an inventor for stuffed crust pizza has his patent stolen by Pizza Hut after sending it to, to them twice. And I urge you to see it. StolenDough.com. Go on the website. And you can see it on Apple TV and Amazon Prime. And we can say you heard it here first. Stefano DeFray. Stefano, thanks for being with us tonight. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Dell. You're you a legend. <laughs> no, in my own mind.